Hi friends, and folks. Some books are to be tasted, others to be swallowed, and some few to be chewed and digested, that is, some books are to be read only in parts, others to be read, but not curiously, and some few are to be read wholly, and with diligence and attention. This statement by Francis Bacon is what we must keep in mind, while choosing a book to read. There are a great number of books out there, thousands if not millions are published in a day, but are they all good to read? The answer is in Bacon's statement. Not all books are good enough to be read, or even to be thought of reading. Yes, books are our best friends, but we must choose friends with caution. Not every person can be our good friend, neither each book with a brilliant cover is a good book. But, how would one know that a book is good, or not? For the same, we have book reviews. In this session we are going to learn how to write a book review. So, let's begin. The first and the foremost thing is to understand is what a book review is. A review is a critical appraisal of a text, event, object, or phenomenon. Reviews can ruminate books, articles, entire genres, or fields of literature, structural design, skill, style, brasseries, policies, expositions, enactments, and many other forms. This video will focus on book reviews. Above all, a review makes an argument. The most important element of a review is that it is an annotation, not purely a precipitate. It countenances you to enter into exchange of ideas, and discussion with the work's creator, and with other audiences. You can offer settlement, or incongruity and ascertain where you find the work archetypal, or deficient in its knowledge, conclusions, or organization. You should obviously state your judgment of the work in demand, and that report will probably resemble other types of speculative writing, with a thesis statement, supporting body paragraphs, and a supposition. Now, let us understand the purpose of a book review. Lettering a book review is a great approach to let parallel readers know about an electrifying, fresh page turner, or give a heads up that a volume might not meet prospects. Whether you're reviewing a book on a site like Goodreads, or on your individual blog, you'll want your analysis to be enlightening and obliging for your audience. Here are the parts of a book review. First of all, a peg, then, essential book information, followed by, basic plot summary, after it, we have, your praise and critique, later comes, your recommendation, and at last, your rating. These all are essential parts of a book review. We will discuss, each of these one by one, in details. What do I mean by a peg? A peg is a line that hooks your addressee's thoughtfulness, and piques their curiosity, so they'll endure reading your appraisal, instead of putting it away. Your peg could be a captivating, or confrontational testimonial. For example, Margaret Atwood's seditious genius, lusters in fresh, and unanticipated ways, with this chef d'oeuvre. Or even an inquiry. For example, ever speculated, what the love child of twilight, and the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy would look like. Share any general information, about the book, that is important for readers to know. The title, and author are an obvious choice. The year the book was published may be relevant if it came out 10 plus years ago. Be sure to mention if the book is part of a series, and whether it's necessary to have read other books in the series before this book. Share a high-level synopsis of the plot, so your audience gets the gist, of what the story is about. Best practice is to leave out the climax, or ending of the book, and avoid giving away spoilers, so you don't ruin the story for your audience.
It's always better to err on the side of caution and say the plot has an unexpected twist rather than revealing the villain is the protagonist's father. If you must include a spoiler, some review sites will let you hide spoiler sentences, though your audience can choose whether they want to read it or not. Sites like Goodreads also include a short synopsis or teaser on the book's web page, so providing an outline may sometimes be unnecessary. Use your best judgment on whether sharing a synopsis will benefit your review. This section is the most important part of your review and should be the longest. Anyone can summarize a plot, but what is your unique take on this book? Simply saying a book was good or bad, or that you liked it or didn't, isn't helpful. Let your audience know why you think it's a great read, or why you found it disappointing. Sharing these details will help your audience form their own opinion of whether they would enjoy reading the book. For example, the vivid language instantly transported me into the world, but there were several huge plot holes that didn't make sense. Another example, I personally didn't care for the protagonist, the snaky anti-hero shtick got old after a while. And here's one more for you, the writing was rough, with especially awkward dialogue, but I thought the premise of the story was brilliant. After sharing your praise and critique, let your audience know your conclusions. Who do you think would enjoy this book? Did you personally dislike it because of the time travel paradoxes, but think that folks who like a good space opera would have fun with it? Is this the 16th book in a series that was starting to grow stale, and you were pleasantly surprised by some new characters? Most reviews provide a star rating system. Let your audience know your rationale for choosing a particular rating. If you're reviewing a book on your personal blog and using your own rating system, be sure to explain this as well. Keep it streamlined, pay attention to length and make every word count. Lengthy, rambling reviews are confusing and time-consuming to read. Keep your readers with you by getting to the point. Remember to proofread, make sure your spelling and grammar are on point. A review riddled with errors is confusing to read and may not be taken seriously. Don't be mean, remember that you're reviewing a book that another human poured their heart and soul into to write. Express your honest opinion, but don't be nasty about it. Imagine if it were your book being reviewed, how would you want a reader to express their critique? So, this was about writing a book review. We discussed each and every part in details, with examples. But all the steps are secondary, the primary step is reading the books. I don't want you to be a bookworm, but reading more and more books will enrich your vocabulary. One more important thing that books help in is broadening our perspective. Knowledge has no limits, and knowledge has inexhaustible dimensions. This is your chance to know each and every dimension. Read as much as you can, and read good books.